Gia. What up, though? OG Kenny, O underscore G underscore Kenny, at Retired from the Streets TV. Listen, do me a favor. If y'all ain't subscribed right now, y'all out your mind. Y'all out your mind. Because I got fire coming for you. I've been working hard and I've been skipping some days, but guess what? I've been putting together a nice little list of stories I know are going to blow y'all wigs. So, man, hit that subscribe button if y'all haven't done so so far. Hit the notification bell. Hit the like button. Smash all them buttons. Share this bad boy. If at the end you find some value or some humor or whatever to it, and by all means, always feel free to comment whatever you would like, good, bad, or indifferent. Does not matter. But welcome back, man. I appreciate y'all for tuning in again. Appreciate everybody that constantly hit me up. I always say this, and I, I talk to people that's in the same space as I am. I say, listen, it doesn't matter to me having the biggest crowd or the biggest subscribers or followers. I'd rather have a few people that really, really rock with me. That's we, we, we really building this community about retiring people from the community. I mean, from the, from the um, streets, retiring them from that, that, that lifestyle, that stress, that ignorant mindset, right? That self-destructive pattern. And... It's crazy because like me being in this space now, I've always tried to be that voice of reason for me and mine, even when I was on garbage, even when I was on BS, even when I was hitting licks and jugging and robbing and I'm on that to be honest with you, but it was just always, I always listen to God's voice, you know what I mean? I ain't going to say always, but I always had the, the soundness of mind to learn how to listen to him more, if that makes sense, right? And... Reverting back to where I was at on the last story, I'm in Macomb. I'm dealing with a lot of different young dudes. I'm dealing with a lot of people that I really, really love. Now, what happens is you get around people, like, for the first time that have never really ever left the streets, ever been incarcerated, and you get this caged beast mentality that people adapt to real fast and it's unfortunate because some of these young dudes get into that zone they think it's cool you got dudes that encourage it and they never break free of that way of thinking so let's just thank take a moment of silence just thank god for all of us who do listen to that voice of reason right you know when somebody's talking to us or whether it's you know us listening to our own sound of mind now i had a homie um he was real tight like, not even real tight, but we did, like, a lot of um, back and forth, like, dealings with each other and whatnot. And <clears throat> I was trying to tell him, like, bro, you're going through it because you don't have a regimen. You understand what I'm saying? And that's why I say it's key to always have not just a business plan, but to have a life plan first. And at that time, I'm telling bro in so many words, because there wasn't my, my, my term wasn't life plan back then. It was just you don't have a regimen. You don't have nothing you do consistently every day that keeps you busy and focused, especially in this environment. Bro didn't want to listen. We would work out. He was calling us. Um, we was doing calisthenics, jumping jacks, right, um, bear crawls, burpees and all that. He called it Jane Fonda. Like, y'all doing that Jane Fonda workout. If y'all familiar with Jane Fonda, um, Henry Fonda's, um, I believe, daughter, fitness um, celebrity from the 80s and I want to say the 90s. But, yeah, he called us the Jane Fonda workout. I challenged him though, cause he big dude, big younger. My my, my brother, um, BX, matter of fact. So, me and BX still cool to this day. So I might pull him on the show, cause he called me the other day. As a matter of fact, when we chopped it up, but we just called him Big Youngin back then. So Big Youngin wanted to test this theory about that he could, cause he figures he hoop, cause he hoop and he up and down the court. I'm like, it's not the same as running ten laps, right around this rugged terrain in between dudes and all that. And it's burning up and then leaving straight from that. Like an army style workout for real. A, a basic training type of workout for real. Because you leave there, you go right. If y'all go back to that video about um, I was two days out of the hole and I passed out. 
That regimen I'm talking about then, getting out jogging, doing 400 different calisthenics, 100 jumping jacks, 100 burpees, 100 um, bear crawl, 100 or whatever, right? He thought it was sweet. And the reason why it was crucial for me to give him this information and put him to this task is because I'm like, bro, you're in here literally stressing and that hooping ain't enough for you. You need a fitness regimen. You need an educational regimen. You need a spiritual regimen. No, I was Jane Fonda workout. When I first joined the Melanics, uh, the Melanic Islamic Palace of the Rising Sun, I was Reverend Ike for the first probably two or three months. He wouldn't let me live that down until he saw how devout and serious I was to new information, knowledge, right? So, I, like I said, I called him out. All right, check this out. We be out there every Sunday, and for security, we be out there on Wednesday. However, me and some of the bros, we do this about four times a week on days that we don't have to do it as far as our part of our, our um, military or um, security awareness, you know, so you be fit for, for whatever coming your way. Our My thing was, we doing this just for peace of mind, soundness of mind. It's that, that neurochemicals, I tell you, that fire off when you're doing something that opens up your pleasure zone, right? When you're doing something that gives you... Um, what you call that biochemical or, or physiological um, benefits after a while you keep doing it I don't care what it is if it gives you that pleasure release you're gonna want to keep doing it and for me at that time it was working out I, I invited bro in now mind you I'm still kind of I guess rookie ish to working out but I, I, I had got acclimated to it more than you know some people and dude wasn't built for this my baby I lay you to death but we get to run it right first couple laps he like he warming up like most of us doing, right? You getting anything fired up, getting all the your calves used to the um the rhythm, the knees, everything. You getting your little slow bounce. You you know you working the bugs out. Everything got to get warmed up, right? So the first two laps or three laps, we usually doing that because we got ten to go. Now, I'm not gonna say bro didn't last the whole ten, but I will say this: every round up until probably the fifth or sixth, he was doing pretty decent. He was getting steadily better. He was laughing, clowning. Hey man, I told you, Jane Fonda. He picking up the speed. I'm telling him, you can do what you want to do, right? But unless you're trying to expand your lungs, you keep a steady pace when you run, a consistent pace. Unless you're trying to challenge yourself to be more, um, to have more distance, to, to expand your lungs, or to increase your speed, then you pick it up, <laughs> sprint it out. He want to keep doing this, thinking it's cool. I said, bro, pace yourself. We still got 400 calisthenics and some stretching and stuff to do. No, he don't listen. He keep it moving. We get all the way to the end of the 10 laps. He make it through successful. I gave him some daps. So he it ain't that bad. He said, I told you, Jane Fonda, boy, I'm built for it. I'm laughing because it's funny, right? Because I'm like, he don't know what he got in store. We get to doing jumping jacks. Cool, he can breeze through that. We, do, we don't do it on 20, 25 a set. We do 25, like this, 25, 25, each man. When you get back to your turn, 25 again, until we do 100. Same thing with the um, the squats, the, the, the jump squats, right? You go down and you come up and jump, jump, right? Jump. Get through them. He starts struggling probably around the third set. And I see, okay, right? So we say, okay, for the next one, we're going to probably do push-ups, right? So we go into the push-up thing. 20 push-ups at a time just because we've been kind of getting a little tapped off. So we're going to do five sets of 20 of these. Blowing through them. It's kind of good for bro. I see him. He hit him. Big boy. I can see that kind of, that, tent, that, that tension he had on his lungs and chest wasn't there no more. Now, burpee time. And if y'all know what burpees is, it's when you go down into like a plank, like you about to do a push-up, and you come back up, and you do that, and you jump, and you come up, and you stretch out, and you, them burpees, right? Bros did a set of burpees. One set of burpees. Guess what happened? He blew chunks everywhere. Everywhere. Nasty. Whatever we ate for breakfast that day was all over his feet, all over the clothes, all on the sidewalk. Then it didn't stop. It kept coming. It was like a water faucet. I'm laughing, bro. I'm laughing because I told him. This ain't sweet, bro. It wasn't sweet. It never been sweet. I built up to this. All them times you seen me out here the last two or so months, running every weekend, up and then every Tuesday, and then Wednesday and third, and building that up, it took time. It took time to be able to talk my mess and be consistent with talking it because I was consistently getting better at what allowed me to brag in the first place. The fact that I was cutting up, I was trimming down, I seen the results, and I'm like, yeah, you see it. I'm getting fast, I'm getting bigger. Everybody wanted to clown. Yeah, that's Jane Fonda. Yeah, you're going to be like a crackhead in a minute, right? Promise you. To this day, me and bro still laugh about that. It's still a respectable story that me and him share because he like, yeah, man. And I and I always tell him the point in that, in that, that story, bro, was be you. Know your lane. Pace yourself. 
When you when you in unfamiliar territory, pace yourself. When you get to doing too much in territories that aren't yours, it could be bad for you. And that's ha that happened with him. It reminds me of this story that I did recently with PNB Rock. You know what I mean? With Ice T touched on um, LA gang culture and was saying, "I've been telling y'all to stop wearing all this jewelry out here, man. You in a zone in an area that you're not comfortable with, something that's foreign to you. You know, you're gonna get sick or poisoned." robbed it's unfortunate right it's sad and like um fat joe was saying like i'm not mad at the robbery because like i i come from that like fat joe said he come from that i come from that so i it wasn't like okay you made yourself lickable but you ain't have to you know they ain't have to do the brother in so that whole point is the same thing i was telling big youngin back then a lot of us got to stay in our lane stay in our comfort zone and when we trying to push ourselves outside of our comfort zone we got to do it at a steadily incrementally better pace you don't rush yourself into nothing now what big younger should have did right is pace yourself got a little better say okay this week i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that i'm gonna just do and but he want to try to blow through it and prove a point and up blow, blowing chunks everywhere i don't think that was pnb rock case and i ain't trying to compare the two stories but it reminds me of that like getting out of your comfort zone too fast especially could be dangerous to y'all man especially in prison because that was a light story just imagine when dudes jump full in like with the gambling i was saying about trying to get into the, the drug game and there and whatnot start messing with them boys and whatnot and you don't know what you're doing or who you're dealing with and it end up bad for them dudes they be victims of assaults and all type of stuff behind a lot of that stuff man you know but funny story man uh very funny if y'all want to get in the comment section if y'all want to see big young big young and a big dude big stocky lazy eye he a formidable looking dude, so man, I think he'd be entertaining and he got a crazy laugh. I think y'all enjoy him. So if y'all want to see Big Youngin, y'all want me to bring Big Youngin out, get in the comment section, let me know. I bring BX, aka Big Youngin out, and um, we can read, <laughs> we can talk about some of the times we had and recant that story, you know what I mean? Anyway, my love y'all, man. OG Kenny, O underscore G underscore Kenny. As always, I appreciate y'all time. Keep the change, keep them nervous. At Retired from the Streets TV. Smash that subscribe. Smash that like. Get in the comment section. Go on ahead and share it. You feel me? But I love y'all. Y'all be safe. Enjoy the rest of y'all day. Um, this video is going to upload a little late because I've been working again. Renovating the property. I'm going to take y'all through. Clean the attic out. When I showed y'all recently, I'm going to take y'all through to the next phase of that. So y'all can follow that journey with me. And be a part of my success as I grow. As an investor. As an entrepreneur and all that. I want y'all to grow with me. To learn with me. And that's the process I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on, man. So bear with me. The videos might not come every, every day like they used to, but I'm guaranteed to drop you heat throughout the week as I build this before it get too cold and get these houses secured and whatnot and get somebody in them. <sighs> I love y'all and I'm out.